SCP-5998. Man, Ascendant. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. Provisional Outpost 5998 has been constructed around SCP-5998 and should be staffed only by those with strong atheistic beliefs who have not previously expressed religious faith. Any changes observed in SCP-5998's condition should be reported to the Department of Tactical Theology immediately. Description. SCP-5998 is a desiccated corpse frozen in a kneeling position south of the North Pole, at 86 degrees, 7 minutes 10.6 seconds north, 69 degrees, 13 minutes 10.6 seconds west. The corpse, which was covered by a thick blanket upon discovery, resembles a human with several physical abnormalities, six fingers on each hand, three eyes, bone protrusions emerging from its back. SCP-5998 has not decayed since discovery. Disturbance of the corpse results in the formation of Type 1 Empyrean entities, also known as Aphonim. While instances appear to last only minutes before dissipating, they are hostile to any personnel within sight. Instances will attempt to move SCP-5998 away, but are unable to do so before their cessation. Religious personnel attempting to approach the area are subject to nausea, vomiting, and intense feelings of guilt, sorrow, or anger. Religious personnel transported forcefully to SCP-5998's near proximity will experience seizures and remain incoherent until removed. Those who are currently non-religious, but have been so in the past, will typically experience a religious reawakening, professing a return to faith. SCP-5998-1 is a grave marker comprised of piled stones stacked on top of one another directly in front of the corpse. The gravestone is devoid of any names and dates, bearing instead the following line in English. The chains have broken and the fires have been doused. Discovery. The Foundation discovered SCP-5998 in 1961, after the Department of Tactical Theology had calculated the decreasing effectiveness of various religion-aligned containment procedures. Researchers theorized that an Iscariot event, the death or cessation of a religiously significant figure, had occurred, and began reviewing global levels of Akiva radiation. In 1963, consistently high levels of ambient radiation around the North Pole drew suspicion, and concentrated searches of the area were undertaken, leading to the discovery of SCP-5998. The following events have tentatively been proposed to have been affected by the 5998 Iscariot event. The Quiet Revolution in Quebec, Canada. The Communist Party of China's promotion of atheism as a result of the Cultural Revolution. A renewed interest in German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche's works, as well as the Death of God philosophical movement in the 1960s. Launch of Vostok 1. Addendum. In 1989, the corpse of a Caucasian male in his early 40s was found buried in a snowbank approximately 50 meters from SCP-5998. Identification in his pocket confirmed him as a member of GOI-182, La Spada di Cristo, a Vatican-affiliated group of interest. The remnants of a crashed Piaseki H-21 Shawnee helicopter were found similarly buried a short distance away from SCP-5998. Analysis of the crash site concluded that the pilot had likely lost control of the aircraft after the fuel tank had exploded, though the cause of the explosion could not be determined. A number of items were recovered, in various states of damage. An envelope with a letter enclosed, stamped by a seal. Illegible due to water damage. A gold cross on a chain. Warped by the heat of the crash. A personal calendar in Italian for the year of 1959. Ink damage is present extensively on most dates for the month of January, stopping at the 25th. Note that, Pope John XXIII announced the Second Vatican Council on this date, which ultimately resulted in wide-spanning church reforms. Remnants of a map, with ink damage present. A textual document was also recovered from the wreckage, and is available below in a translated form. To whoever finds this, know what I did, I did with the heaviest of hearts. I grew up an orphan. I never knew my mother. My father had gone to serve Italy in the Great War as they were calling it, and never came back. I was one of many, in the overcrowded streets I called home. I most likely would have died in those streets, stealing food from the wrong shopkeeper or running afoul of the local mafia gangs, if I had not had the fortune of picking the pockets of a soldier. Though I had not known it at the time, stealing from a sword of Christ would turn out to be the greatest decision of my life. For the first time in my life, I had brothers. A home, faith. The Lord gave me the greatest gifts I had ever known, and the possibility of salvation for a misspent youth. He gave me everything I never knew I needed, and asked for nothing in return. And what did I do to repay this unconditional kindness? I betrayed him and everything I ever believed in. The Lord welcomed me into his arms, and I placed a dagger in his back. 
The Holy Father insisted I would not burn for this act, that I would be venerated among my brothers as Saint Filippo, a guardian of man's progress. But not even canonization can wash the blood from my hands. Bury what you have found in here. Let me be forgotten, as he will be soon. Throughout the SCP article, there were hidden sentences placed between paragraphs. They read as follows. I tried, I did, to make things better than I had. This world of ancient horrors and distortions in reality is fundamentally broken. I gave you commandments to keep your minds and souls pure. To you, freedom was better than servitude, even if it would lead to your destruction. I couldn't see what your flawed eyes, those beautiful eyes, could see. I ignored them and declared my punishments for those who would defy me. I see what you see now. Humanity shall decide its own future. The snow is cold, a familiar feeling. It feels beautiful dying in the dark. You're living in the light. I did my duty, I'm sorry. 